Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Mohammed Yusuf. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of condolences to the President of Egypt, Abdel Fattah al Sisi, on the demise of the former General Commander of the Armed Forces and Minister of Defense and Military Production Field, Marshal Mohammed Hussein Tantawi. His Majesty praised the deceased's role in supporting the historical relations between Bahrain and Egypt and his efforts in serving his country and defending the Arab nation. His Majesty prayed to Allah the Almighty to rest the soul of the deceased in eternal peace and grant his family and the people of Egypt fortitude and consolation. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, sent a cable of condolences to the President of Egypt, Abdel Fattah al Sisi, on the demise of the Egypt's former General Commander of the Armed Forces and Minister of Defense, Field Marshal Mohammed Hussein Tantawi. His Royal Highness commended the late Field Marshal's role in supporting the historical relations between Bahrain and Egypt and his efforts in serving his country and defending the Arab nation. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting yesterday at Libya Palace. The cabinet welcomed the outcomes of the visit made by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to Egypt, which included a meeting with the President of Egypt, Abdel Fattah al Sisi. The cabinet noted that the meeting further strengthened bilateral relations and joint coordination on international issues and developments. To mark the International Day of Peace, the cabinet affirmed His Majesty's initiatives that support international efforts to uphold international security highlighting that the Kingdom of Bahrain continues its unwavering support of efforts to enhance global peace. The cabinet asserted the importance of strengthening the legal and legislative mechanisms that combat money laundering and the financing of terrorism. In this regard, the cabinet welcomed the Basel Anti-Money Laundering Index's finding, which ranks Bahrain as the first in the Arab region. The cabinet reviewed a summary of the performance of key economic indicators periodically monitored by the Ministry of Finance and National Economy up to August 2021. The ministry provided a comparison to the same periods in 2020 and 2019, showing signs of recovery and return to levels registered before the global pandemic. The findings are as follows. In the real estate sector, the number of building permits issued in the first eight months of 2021 increased by 18% compared to the same period in 2019, while for the month of August 2021 alone, the number exceeded that recorded in August 2019 by 64.6%. Total spent using point-of-sales machine using ATM cards issued in the Kingdom of Bahrain in August increased by 55% compared to the same period in 2019. The value of Bahrain's non-oil exports of national origin increased by 103% during August 2021 compared to August 2019, while imports grew by 16% during the same period. The tourism sector's recovery is shown by several indicators, including the occupancy rate of four- and five-star hotels, which exceeded 48% in August 2021. The second edition of the National Employment Program achieved 70% of its goals in terms of employment and training. The program has succeeded in employing more than 17,000 Bahrainis and training more than 7,000 Bahrainis. The cabinet discussed several memorandums during the meeting and approved the following. A memorandum by the Civil Service Council regarding the restructuring of several government agencies to improve efficiency and performance. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding three draft decree laws that are part of a development package to improve legislation. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs ratifying the Arab Customs Cooperation Agreement, which aims to enhance joint cooperation between Arab customs administrations and further strengthen coordination in the economic and trade fields. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding a draft law approving the legal system, amending some provisions of the Unified Customs Legal System for GCC countries. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding a draft decision to amend some provisions of the executive executive regulations of the civil service law. A memorandum by the Minister of Foreign Affairs on the third periodic report of the Kingdom of Bahrain on the progress made in the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities to be submitted to the Committee on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities at the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights. The Cabinet took note of several ministerial reports, including the outcomes of the 5th meeting of the GCC Ministerial Committee for Education and 21st meeting of the GCC Ministers of Higher Education and Scientific Research, chaired by Bahrain, and the 31st meeting of the GCC Agricultural Cooperation Committee.
His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the outgoing Ambassador of the Philippines, Alfonso Ver, at Rafah Palace to mark the end of his tenure in Bahrain. His Royal Highness highlighted the Kingdom's commitment to further strengthening relations with the Philippines, noting the importance of enhancing bilateral cooperation across various sectors. He commended the contributions of the Filipino community to Bahrain's comprehensive development. His Royal Highness noted the Ambassador Ver's efforts to further the bilateral cooperation and coordination and wished him success in his future assignments. Ambassador Ver expressed gratitude for the opportunity to meet His Royal Highness and noted the Philippines' commitment to further develop the relations with Bahrain. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, also received the outgoing Ambassador of Thailand, Tanis Nasson Kala, at Rafah Palace to mark the end of his tenure in Bahrain. His Royal Highness highlighted the steady growth of ties between Bahrain and Thailand in light of agreements between the two countries. His Royal Highness noted the importance of further developing mutually beneficial bilateral relations. He commended the efforts of the Ambassador to further Bahraini-Thai relations and wished the Ambassador success in his future assignments. The Ambassador expressed gratitude for the opportunity to meet His Royal Highness and expressed appreciation for His Royal Highness's commitment to strengthening relations between the two countries. He also affirmed his country's desire to continue building and strengthening existing relations between the two kingdoms. The first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, attended the match between the Muharraq Club and the Lebanese Al Ahd Club, which took place at the late Sheikh Ali bin Mohammed Al Khalifa Stadium for the quarterfinals of the Asian Football Confederation Cup. His Highness Sheikh Khalid praised the technical level of the Muharraq team during the match, which reflected their thorough preparations. His Highness congratulated the team for winning and qualifying for the semi-finals of the competition and wished them success in the remaining stages of the championship. His Highness praised the spectac spectators for motivating and supporting the Muharraq team and their commitment to follow the precautionary measures to combat the coronavirus pandemic. His Highness Sheikh Khalid affirmed his continuous support for all national teams and their participation in various sports championships and events to continue making achievements for the kingdom and promote its regionally, continentally and internationally.
The executive and legislative authorities held a remote meeting chaired by the Speaker of the Representatives Council for Ziyah Zainal in the presence of the Chairman of the Shura Council Ali Saleh to discuss the strategic initiatives of the Ministry of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowment that aim to read justice. The meeting was attended by the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowment, Sheikh Khalid bin Ali Al Khalifa, the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, the Minister of Parliament Affairs, Ghanem bin Fadl al the Minister of Information, Ali al Rumayhi, as well as officials. Zainal affirmed the constant cooperation and coordination between the two authorities for the benefit of the country and its people, in line with the directives of His Majesty the King and the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. Saleh affirmed that the initiatives of the Ministry of Justice 2021 to 2025 reflects the development of the legal and justice systems in the kingdom and contributes to providing legal services for citizens and residents. al Bayanin expressed thanks and appreciation to the Speaker and the Chairman for their keenness to further enhance the cooperation between the two authorities. The Minister of Justice then highlighted the strategic initiatives that will be implemented over the course of five years that will enhance legal and justice systems in the Kingdom. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Bar Rashid Zayani, took part in the consultative meeting of the Arab League Council at the ministerial level held at the permanent mission of Kuwait to the United Nations. The meeting was chaired by the Kuwaiti Foreign Minister and Minister of State for Cabinet Affairs, Sheikh Dr. Ahmed Nasser Al Mohammed Al Sabah, who is the president of the 156th session of the Arab League and with the participation of the Secretary General of the Arab League, Ahmed Abul Ghaid. The meeting reviewed several topics on the 76th United Nations General Assembly's agenda, development and dealing with the Palestinian cause at the UN as well as coordination positions regarding the international issues that will be discussed at the current UNGA. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Bar Rashid Al Zayani, met in New York at the permanent mission of Tunisia to the United Nations with Minister of Foreign Affairs, Migration and Tunisians Abroad, Uthman Jarandi. The two sides reviewed the broader relations between the two countries and the means to enhance relations in various fields and discussed recent developments at the regional and international levels as well as issues of common interest. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Al Rashid Al Zayani, met in New York at the permanent mission of Bahrain to the United Nations with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Estonia, Eva Maria Limetz. The two sides reviewed the bilateral relations between the two countries and the means to enhance friendly relations and discussed several issues of common interest. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Bar Rashid Al Zayani, met in New York with the President of the 76th Session of United Nations General Assembly, Abdullah Shahid. The Minister congratulated the President on being elected for the 76th Session of UNGA, hailing the program set for this session and wishing him success in achieving the desired outcomes. They also reviewed the issues to be discussed by the UNGA during this session and their expected outcomes. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, praised the royal directives of His Majesty the King in announcing the economic stimulus package to face the repercussions of the coronavirus and maintain sustainable development. The Minister also praised the role of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister in this regard and for his unlimited support. The stimulus package was extended for three months from June to August of 2021, which aims to support the economic sectors impacted by the pandemic as well as benefit citizens. The Minister affirmed that the efforts of Team Bahrain enhanced the economic recovery and stressed the importance of intensifying efforts to achieve fiscal balance and transform challenges into opportunities. The Minister of Labor and Social Development, Jamil Ahmedan, chaired the seventh meeting of the Committee of the GCC Minister of Labor, as well as the G seventh meeting of the GCC Committee of Ministers of Social Affairs remotely. Ahmedan conveyed the greetings of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, and their wishes for the success of the session and for making decisions that contribute to supporting joint Gulf action in order to achieve integration among the member states as the aspirations of hopes of the people of the GCC countries. He praised the content of the final statement and an Ula declaration at the summit of Sultan Qaboos and Sheikh Sabah, which stressed the importance of maintaining the gains and achievements of the GCC states. He noted the Supreme Council's directives to focus on projects with an economic and developmental dimension that would achieve more welfare and prosperity for the people of the GCC countries. Hamidan stressed the importance of decisions reached in the labor and social fields.
A number of Qatari citizens affected by the discriminatory election law in Qatar circulated messages on social media that they sent to the British government, appealing to the British Prime Minister Boris Johnson to help them find documents proving the presence of their ancestors on Qatari soil in 1930. Qatari citizens said that the new Shura Council election law deprived them of exercising their civil rights and may also make them lose their nationalities in a remarkable development of events in the country. Qatari citizens stressed in their letters to the British government that the absence of a Qatari government in the 30s of the last century makes the United Kingdom obligated to provide documents so that many Qatari citizens do not lose their constitutional right, adding that the Qatari government sought after its independence to retrieve and destroy the archive of historical information in an attempt to obliterate vital documents that expose the history of the state and its reference, in addition to res restricting Arab tribes in Qatar. In their message, Qatari citizens stated that the Qatari security services are prosecuting all those who express opinion of rejecting the law and seek to achieve its legitimate demands, in addition to using the means of terrorism and threats that affect those who reject the law and their families, which necessitated their resort to the international community to pay attention to their deteriorating conditions. The Qatari capital, Doha, was witnessed over the past week sit-ins by affected citizens after they were denied full citizenship rights in accordance with the discriminatory election law, which prevents Qataris who are classified by the nationality law as neutralized instead of original from running and voting in the upcoming elections. International human rights organi organizations has called on the authorities in Doha to amend the citizenship law, which they described as incomplete and unfair to the Qatari people to grant all Qatari citizens their full rights of citizenship, in addition to the immediate release of all detainees who have been imprisoned in Qatar simply for exercising their right to free expression and peaceful assembly. Earlier last month, Decree Law 18 of 2021 was issued with respect to the amendment of some of the provisions of Law 51 of 2014 concerning the regulation of engineering professions. To speak more about the, these amendments and the impact on these professions, we are joined over the phone by the Chairwoman of the Council for Regulating the Practice of Engineering Professions, Engineer Maryam Ahmed Jamal. Hello, Engineer Mariam. Can you tell us about the key changes and implications of issuing this amendment to engineering professions? Good evening, Mohammed. Uh, first of all, thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak this evening. So, Legislative Decree Number 18 of 2021 included some strategically important amendments for the current and future framework of the Council for Regulating the Practice of the Engineering Professions, the CRPEP. These amendments aimed at elevating the engineering profession in the Kingdom of Bahrain and overcoming the obstacles and challenges that the sector faces. Um, these changes also have the overall aim of increasing efficiencies within the sector, increasing public-private partnerships, and overall sustainability of the sector. I would like to emphasize that all of these changes in the law are in the interest of the engineering offices and in the engineers. So some of the amendments include, for example, the following things. So engineering offices as individual in establishments may continue in the event, uh, God forbid, of the demise of the owner in cases where the heirs request to operate the office of the owner after he passes and according to specific conditions. Uh, with the changes, there's now the possibility of establishing engineering offices in the form of commercial companies according to specified requirements and conditions. And also the new amendments now allow engineers to own commercial CRs in accordance with the conditions specified in the executive regulation and in a way that does not conflict with ethical engineering practice. So all of these amendments are in line with the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister and in light of what was approved by the Cabinet to increase the sector's efficiency and sustainability. And I would like to reiterate that all of these uh, amendments are in the interest of improving and addressing challenges that the sector faces. And if you'd allow me, I would like to take this opportunity to thank our leadership for their continued support to the sector and their support in producing these timely amendments to the law that can only serve to elevate the profession. 
Chairwoman of the Council of Regulating the Practice of Engineering Professions, Engineer Maryam Ahmed Jamaan, thank you for joining us. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,161,519 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 1,106,254 had taken the second, and 272,556 had taken the booster dose. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 798 with 89 recoveries and 119 registered new cases. 62 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 46 are contacts of active cases and 11 are travel related. The ministry urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for combating the coronavirus. <laughs> 